Hi and welcome to Just Paint It. I'm your host Christina Watts and today we're going to paint a really nice easy autumn scene. So on my palette I have a variety of colors uh, ranging from yellows to blues, uh, violet, some greens, of course our white and our darks which is a burnt umber and then I also have another side palette of oranges and a black. And autumn is just so full of color, you can't help but use all of the paints in your art supply room. So to begin with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our background and then we're gonna work some autumn trees up from there. I've uh, got a flat brush right now. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of water, take off the excess water and go right into some of my favorite titanium white. Now I like starting with the white on these canvases because it knocks back the other colors that we're gonna put on top. Now, as we make this scene, we want muted background so that our autumn trees can pop on top. This will kind of give a nice aesthetic to this and it'll just be an glow, a glowing element to our painting. Um, as I go here, I'm now diving into some of my yellow on one side of my brush and some titanium um, buff on the other side. When you're doing this, just use some nice loose brush strokes, run them in a crisscross pattern, add some white on top of your color if you feel you've gone too, too crazy with your color. Because like I said, we want to have a nice muted background to inlay some of our trees. Now of course this is going to be the sky area, so we're going to keep this pretty light. As we work down into the ground, you're going to see me go into the blues, the greens, the violets, and then of course where the leaves fall, we'll go back into the lighter color so that you can see those oranges and those yellows really pop off the canvas. This is a really nice easy painting that anybody can do. Um, just, you know, pull out your gear, give yourself half hour, an hour, you know, longer if you want to be leisure at it and uh, enjoy the process. Painting is all about enjoying the creation as you're making it. And if you make any mistakes, it's not a big deal. It's just paint. All right, this is looking pretty good. I'm kind of gonna stop at this and move into the other colors in this uh, two-third area here. So again, I'm gonna start with uh, just a touch of white right here along the edging of the sky, just because when I, I put any kind of purples or blues next to the yellows, they will tend to go gray. And I uh, just looking to avoid some of that. So I can't see it, but I have white running all along here. And now we're going to jump into um, our, I'm going to go with a little bit of a light green. So I have two greens on my plate. One's a little darker than the other. And we're going to just put this one down first. Again, you just want to brush it in nice and easy. Just blocking in this area. Now I'm going to add some of the darker green here and there. This isn't um, a huge transition in greens, but it will do for this. And I'm also going to go into blue. This is a magnesium blue. Uh, it's really great for mixing with other colors. It's just such a nice blue to have in your artist toolbox. And as you can see, I'm even brushing up a little bit with some of this. And I'm being very careful not to put any purple in just yet. I'm going to scrub a little bit up and down because this background, of course, is bush and bush is up and down. So going with vertical brush strokes on this part. Now I'm going to add a little bit of purple in here. This is really dark and I will consider knocking this back because if I don't, none of my other items that I'm going to put on top of this, the trees, trunks that I'm doing in brown, are gonna really stand out. So right now, that's just a nice block of color. I'm gonna grab some white and we're just gonna go in and scrub a little bit in here and there. 
And then we're gonna rub it around. Now it's amazing sometimes when you're doing these backgrounds and you think, oh, this looks terrible. It's just the groundwork. And with any canvas, you know, it's gonna look sometimes more awkward as you go before you're able to pull it up and out into the world. Okay, grabbing back my greens and I'm just gonna use the edge of my brush now and scrub sideways. So this is a flat brush and instead of the broad strokes, I'm looking for more, um, almost like little up and down, finer lines. And then grab some of this. Now, the thing that you want to avoid at this point is you're gonna have some trees and bush in the background that are a little higher than others. You're gonna have some that are bushy and round and some that are spruce trees and they have a tip. So when you're doing this, just think about those shapes. They don't need to be perfect. These are just gonna be set in the background and it's not gonna to matter too much later. I'll make my way over to the other side here. Some trees are taller than others. I'm even grabbing some of this wet purple that's still down and really get in there on that canvas and scrub. Now, if you see these ones are diagonal lines, just adjust it. Just come in and go up a bit. Maybe you want to block there. So use the side, the flat edge of your brush, or if you're looking for the horizontal lines, again, just switch your brush to the edge and come up with it. Now, because we have this purple here, I want to kind of mimic the greens down below it. So I am going to go back into my green because remember we have to go light again. And I don't want to transition from purple to yellow because it could really gray it out. And you can see a few spots where even it's gotten gray with, uh, within the green and the purple here. So I'm adding some greens down here. Now you don't have to necessarily scrub like you did on the top half because we're just looking for a transition of color. So get it in sideways, a little bit vertical, and this will be good enough to put, put that little bit of color in where we need it. And of course, we don't want just one green, we want the other green too. And maybe I will touch a little bit of blue right in here and right over here. And you know what? It's nice to just have a little bit of blue showing. I'm not gonna scrub this blue out all the way. I think it's interesting and just provides a little bit more variety for your eye in terms of uh, color. And I'm really, I don't think too hard about this and where I'm putting things. Remember, this is just the background. Okay, now I have to clean off my brush because we're going back to light. So scrub it off in your water. And we're going to take off all the extra stuff out of there. You want your brush to be damp, but not soaking wet. Otherwise, you're just gonna scrape that paint right back off the canvas when you touch it. Okay, that's decent. Extra water off. And now we're going back into our white, our titanium buff, and this nice warm yellow that we have. And that color pretty much is just called warm yellow. So if you're out there looking for it, just warm yellow. Now I have three colors on my paintbrush, the white, the yellow, the titanium buff. 
This just gets the job done so much faster when you double load, triple load your brush and you can come across the canvas real quick. And again, down below. Now I do like keeping more of the warm yellow towards the bottom so we can kind of vignette this a little bit. I'm using horizontal, primarily brush strokes, a little bit crisscrossing. Getting in with some white and some titanium buff there. And over here too. And more yellow. Pretty solid yellow right on that black, that block here. Almost a bit of a vignette. Trying to balance out these sides. And you can see that I had a little bit of uh, that other color on my brush. So you, it, I'm trying to kind of keep this clean, but some of that color is coming off. And now, um, now that I've done down here, I'm comfortable going back in a bit with some titanium buff and a little bit of yellow up into this green area here. This is wet still. I've moved pretty fast and this will give me a little bit of bent blending time with these acrylics. And just remember that acrylics will dry 20% darker than when you first seen them on your canvas. And this is just sort of something to remember uh, when you're painting. And I'm gonna just drag this up a little bit like there's some mist. I love this effect, it's really fun. Um, you can scrub around if you like mist to be a little bit more cloudy. But I just want this to be a blurry, interesting background. It's almost like um, when you see a photo and the photos are kind of blurred out in the background so that whatever you, is in the foreground really shines. It's the same thing with uh, painting. Okay, that's pretty good that side. I'm gonna do a little bit on the top here too. Just trying to knock these tips back so that they're not so blatant in here. Now, if you took too much paint like I just did just now on my brush, this is the part now where I will wet my brush pretty good, take off most of the water, but not all the water. And I've just got a fair, like it's a more damp brush. So I'm able to basically do a wet wash. Now you gotta be careful with this because if your brush is too wet, you're just gonna lift that color off the canvas. So we're kind of wet washing the top. Again, if you, you, know, you mess this up, it's not the end of the world. You can, knock. You can head back in. And um, also you can paint over top of this area. So if it didn't come back the way you wanted it, not the end of the world. We're gonna put some leaves over top and this is just gonna be off in the distance. Okay, that's good enough. This is our background there for our trees. So now I'm gonna switch brushes because this one here is too much of a flat edge broad brush. We're looking for more organic shapes as we come forward. So now I'm gonna jump into a filbert brush. And a filbert brush is nice because it has a little bit of a round top. And um, it's not an exactly a round brush. It's just a, it's a more of an oval brush and it makes for some really nice organic shapes. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to start building up some of these colors uh, for like some trees with leaves up here and then we're gonna drop down the trunks and then we're gonna have leaves over here. So to do that, I'm going in with a variety of colors. So I'm gonna go in with some blue and some green here and there. This will kind of be a base to some of the tree leaves. And I've got them both on my canvas. Try to make, you know, obscure shapes. You're gonna see when I put the yellow over top of this, how this sort of will come together. But for now, 
you're just making blobs on the canvas. Try to make them, you know, different shapes, different sizes, different um, widths. They don't have to be a perfect leaf shape. These are just the shadows. And we're gonna put some in here. And we're kind of going to keep this section pretty clear because this will be sort of our light ray, like a kind of bit of a light that will fall through here. And what we do up top, we should probably do down below to some degree. So I'm going to add some of them there. Almost like putting a bunch of polka dots all over your canvas. So just enjoy this process. It's just you know, don't think too hard about it. Okay, that's good enough for those. Clean off that brush. Now, sometimes I'll do the yellow first and then I'll put the shadows in. But sometimes if um, you've got decent drying time, you can do it this way. And, and the, the see through of it is nice. Okay, I'm jumping into, we're gonna jump into some oranges too, but I've got that warm yellow on my filbert brush. And I'm gonna use it more like a wand. I'm not super scrubbing this anymore. And we're just tapping. Okay, so we'll just tap through. Now, when I'm doing this, you know, these are gonna be pretty bushy trees. So we're gonna build up all kinds of color in here. So the only thing I'm thinking about is, is this organic? And I'm gonna scrub into some of these grayed areas. So once that yellow touches, or sorry, not the gray areas, the green areas. Once you're scrubbing into these, these are gonna turn a nice lime green. And that's just really nice way of just mixing color right on your canvas. And keep going with that because I really like how that's looking. Sometimes you do something and you rub it around and you're like, yeah, you know what? That can really work out. So then you do more. I haven't even gone into any other yellows yet because really we're getting a lot of variety of color with just this. I will have to start using other yellows for sure. But let's build this up. I think these trees are gonna really come right up off here. Like they're gonna be the piece of resistance coming over. More yellow on this side. Leave some gaps where you do see that background through because if you don't, it's just gonna, it's not gonna look right. So you will see some of this nice muted background that we just painted shine right through. One thing I watch for on these sides is, you know, I don't want there to be like an obvious circle. I don't want there to be a square because that will look too uniform and um, it won't look natural. So when you're thinking about how this needs to go, you know, come down and around, give yourself some organic shapes that don't re represent anything at all, right? So they're more of a blob, they're more free flowing. And then you will have greater success when you're trying to do an impressionist piece like we're doing today. Bounce around your canvas. As you can see, I jump all over the place. I'm jumping all over my sides here. I'm gonna head down into this section and add some more yellow to here. Now remember, these are leaves that have sort of fallen on the ground. So 
We're gonna do like almost little pilings of them. Got some green still on my brush, which is gonna be helpful to make in some of this little lime green area. Really like that part that we put down. And then as we come down here, I'm thinking about what does the base of the tree with all this foliage kind of look like? And sort of shaping it now because we're gonna have some trunks in here. But of course we have, you know, all kinds of leaves that come down in the front of the tree too. So how do you taper that in? Okay, this is looking good. We're gonna jump into another color now. Um, this is the part that gets interesting because we can go with like a really glowing darker yellow, but we also need to get into some of those oranges. So let's go ahead and get into these. Now we have a warm red. We have almost two different shades of orange are really hard to differentiate. And this here is a Quinn burnt orange, which is somewhere in between a red orange, which is really lovely. And we're gonna just go and see on the side how we like that. And that's okay there. I'm gonna keep it down to the sort of the bottom or areas of your trees because it's the darker color and uh, keep that in the sort of the shadow sections here. Now, because it's a red, when it hits the or or the green, it's gonna turn dark. So they're the opposite colors on the color wheel. They're complementary and as beautiful as they are and how they make each other pop when you mix them they can turn muddy gray really fast okay i'm gonna put that in here the whole thing with tree with the trees and the leaves in the fall is just a you know really nice layering of color and sporadic right sporadic patterns and shapes and colors and twist your brush around get some of that color off i'm still using my my brush like a wand but i really am starting to sort of give it a twist here and there and scrub off some of that color And we're gonna put a little bit of red up near the top, not a lot, because like I said, we want that to be the lightest area. I'm looking for balance now. Now I know with this red, it will pop on top of this area. So I'm gonna go in a little deeper here. Looks pretty uniform on that side. Crossing over to the other side. And some in here. rubbing with my brush the extra paint onto the canvas rubbing out some of that color let me get a little yellow in here because i have yellow on this side but i'm not i'm not really consistent with it over here so i'm just looking to balance that and orange so we're going to go in with some orange now I'm going to keep that closer to the top area. And we're going to do the same. I'm going to start putting it in fairly thick here and there. As you can see, I have started to cover up some of my background um, in here, but um, just be mindful of that. Like, definitely, I would have, should have left a bigger gap right there, perhaps. This might bug me later, but you can always paint that color back. Remember, we're coming down and over, and we're gonna scrub some of this orange on top of there. I love the way these sections turn out with the green in behind them. They just look so pretty. I'm gonna take extra paint from the top, and move it around, and again down on the ground here. 
I want some of that color down here. Jump into some yellow. Scrubbing in here. Because I still want these leaves down here to be fairly kind of blurred out. We can put a few more touches on top. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just checking to see how are my oranges. Do I need to kind of pull some in here and there? Right. Uh, I'm going to go with a thicker orange now into here. Now this is a more higher quality paint, this other orange that I'm using. So it is going to stand out more on top of that green just because it's more pigment loaded. So that's really the difference when you get paints. Studio paints are definitely more translucent um, and they can be useful but a good quality of paint has more pigment in it which allows you to really layer the colors up better and um, just kind of give it uh, give it more of a pop of color where you need it especially over top of a dark I'm also going to put that down here and over by this red side that Quinn burnt orange, which is almost a red. Okay, and then I got this warm red here as well. This is a brighter red than the Quinn orange. And I'm only using it to throw in a little bit brighter of a, like a pinky red here and there. Like I said, we're gonna use so many colors because autumn is so full of colors. I love walking through an autumn landscape. It just is so happy and peaceful and colorful and, you know, crisp, it smells good. And if you want, get in there with your fingers, move some of that around, blur it out. Okay, that's good enough for this layer. We will go back and put some like adjustment leaves on there, but now, we want to throw in some tree trunks. Uh, we want to do this now because we have our tree formations. We've got some leaves happening and we just want to see maybe where we need to, to flush this out a little bit more with some detail work. So I am going to clean off that filbert brush and then we're going to get a angle brush. So this angle brush is just a really sort of a small, small little angle brush. This will give me some nice lines. And I'm gonna go in with, with my burnt umber. And this is such a great color. Burnt umber is wonderful to mix with other colors. When you mix it with a blue, it makes a really dark gray. I'm gonna water it down so that it comes right off my brush nice and easy. So I am adding water to this paint because it is a heavy body acrylic. So I just wanted a little more fluid. And now I gotta start to think, okay, where do I want these trunks to go in? And I'm just gonna make some lines that I will work out in a little bit. So we're gonna have a few trees in here. So I'm gonna say here, Watch how I have some shorter than others. One, two, three. We could get away with probably three big trees today. Or we could make like we've got some other trees off in the distance. And I am totally thinking about, you know, these ones here that I'm scrubbing in, they'll be in the distance. So what do we got? One, two, three, kind of four, five, six. Let's run a seven in. Let's 
see how I have different heights and they're not directly, you know, on the same level going up because trees are, you know, off in the distance, so they're further up. And I'm watching that I have an odd number of trees. I have a ton of foliage over here and this side doesn't have as much foliage. So I'm gonna kind of leave it to three obvious trees here for now. And we're gonna make that guy thicker. So all I did was add another line on the other side and shape it down into a tree trunk. Gonna pull it out and in here. Now because my my ground is still wet, I'm able to sort of hit it and suck it right down into that paint. Okay. And you want your tree trunk to be proportionate to your tree. So, you know, make your trunks uh, as big as you think they need to be. To make sense for that tree, really. And I know we're used to doing some birch trees on this channel and I love birch trees so much, but um, having this dark tree trunk doing a few different um, leafy trees is super fun and it is really dramatic too. So I'm gonna put this over here. And here. Let me make that come up here. See how I did this broken line through there? That's important. And you're gonna see me put some branches in. These guys that are off in the distance, oops, I, I'm gonna rub that out. Um, don't worry about them being too detailed. They should be blurry. They should just kind of be, you know, signature of a tree, a little bit of an idea that one's there for your mind. And that's it. Uh, let's see, that one's up there. This one comes down pretty far. I will make this guy come down even lower, I think. So scrubbing that in, moving it over. And that one can just stay up there. And these ones will be covered with foliage more, so it will be fine. And the other thing I'm thinking about now is, you know, you're gonna see some branches through here, right? So I'm just gonna kinda cut some in where people might see some branches throughout here. There'll just be like a random li jiggly little line, you know, that's coming down. What you can do is you can actually take it off the, the trunk and then come up and then break it up a bit here and there and run it over. And don't worry if you don't get this right because you can just put some leaves over top of it so it doesn't really matter. Now obviously this would have some, you know, this would have some branches to them, but you might not see the branches because the leaves will be so full and it will be right in the way. You can use a nice small brush if you really want. And this one's pretty big for this job, but it's gonna do the trick for today. We come over and do this side. So just think about where would that branch go? here and over on this side. You can get lost in a land of zen. Um, branches can stress people out painting them, so when you're doing them, just take a deep breath in and go for it. Now I see some green hair and I'm gonna just pull that guy up and I feel like I can probably go into there. And this one, I'm gonna say that that split, right? So we have some, we can probably split this trunk up here too, actually. Okay. And that's got a lot of paint on it. I'm just gonna brush some of that off and put it over here. I 
I can see that this one's off a bit. So if it's off a bit, you can scrape the paint off if it's still wet and adjust it that way. And then ah, you can run a few little lines in if you really want off in these distances over here. They're not gonna really stand out a whole lot. Okay, that's pretty good. And so now that we've got our trunks in, what we're gonna do is work on our final layer of leaves. And um, it will look good, look really good. Um, one thing too is we do have some uh, light coming through. Actually, I almost wanna make this a little bit of a, I'll fix this piece here. There's a couple sections now that I'm looking at that I'm like, okay, I need to adjust these. We have this section here. So I might form that into a bush in the background. Um, this leaf is almost like a rogue leaf here. So I should probably add some more color to that as well. Um, as I start ramping up these leaves here and we're jumping back into our larger filbert brush. Always a good idea to rinse your brushes out and then really clean them off good at the end of every single art session so that they last you a lifetime. Okay. A little bit of red. There we go. And I'm going to try and push this over into here. So this might be like a, an autumn leaf bush in the background now on this side. And we're just going to scrub this all down. This brush is pretty wet, so I can take that color and work it in here. All these things that you see and you adjust as you're painting. A little bit of green in here. And I've got some titanium buff there. Okay. Jumping back to my plate of lights. Here we have white, and we have yellow, and we have a titanium buff. And now what I'm doing is just tapping some lights in. Okay, so this isn't going to stand out a ton at first, but when it dries, this extra little touches is really going to make a world of difference. Especially up at the top here. And with, the, with this filbert brush, it's really just about tapping. This really just kind of does your branches and your, your uh, foliage for you. Ran out of some yellow here. I'm just going to grab a little bit more. This is your opportunity to hide any branches that you don't like, to affix anything that's bothering you about your piece. You know, I'm knocking some of that green back. I'm even going to add more yellow on the top. But if you build up these layers and you keep going and you build this all up, can really create a dramatic looking scene in just a few minutes. I mean, this is a easy little painting that uh, we've only taken, you know, half an hour to make really, which is quite something. It's quite an achievement when you think at how we've just taken paint and made it look like something. I've got white in this one. And the reason why I have white in that one is because I'm looking at contrast now. Coming in here, same with any of these parts here that bother you. Remember, we just want the impression of this fall tree scene. Coming on this side now, working our way back, muting this a little bit just to knock back all these crazy colors. 
some yellow, some titanium buff, and a little bit of our friend Vite. So much layering is involved. When you're making a like a masterpiece painting, you can guarantee there's so many colors underneath those colors. And you need them, you need them like that. I'm gonna put some yellow right there. What a difference, hey? Like you can see all these colors and they're really starting to come together now. And then the reason why I'm going into the titanium buff and the white is just for, um, just to knock back these colors. They're just so intense. And you know, some people, well, it's up to you. You might really like an intense, colorful painting. Um, you might like it to be more muted. And so what you're doing for muting is, is what I'm doing right now. Okay, see how I popped in some of these colors coming into here? Because of course, when we have the lights on top of our darks, they're gonna pop more. I'm gonna do the same on this side. So we work our way down, down, even across your tree trunk, okay? Do it across your tree trunks. Leaves don't come out to the sides entirely. They come in front, they come down, and then they fall. They fall on the ground. Scrub it in. Okay, I'm using this brush and I'm scrubbing into the canvas. And I'm gonna hit this section over here just to knock that back. Really impressionistic piece. This one's gonna be like a Monet. One day I'm gonna find this in an art museum. Well, maybe I won't find it. I might be dead. But you never know where your painting will end up. Okay, I'm gonna hit some of these spots down here. I'm gonna work on a bit of shadowing down here too before I call this one done. But I really wanna scrub in some more color here because we did so much work up here. We do very much down here. I'm gonna jump into some blues actually and some greens down here because we have shadows down here. So I'm gonna run a little bit of a shadow under this tree. Not too worried about anything right now. Maybe some on here. See, I scrub those in. If you don't do a shadow on your tree, and I've got mine kind of facing away from the light here, uh, it can look like your tree is floating and um, kind of unnatural. And I know that some of these trees are going to have leaves over top of the shadow anyway, but you got to have that shadow in there. And you can use your dark brown. I'm going to put a little brown in that. I don't want it to look like a root, so I typically will go with a blue. Um, I'm actually mixing this brown into the blue here, giving me a nice kind of a dark gray. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Okay. And I'm trying to make sure that the shadows are sort of in the same diagonal pattern. This one kind of got a little crazy. It should go this way. Not a big deal. We are going to fix that. And we're going to cover up the rest. Okay, so that's a good enough shadow. If I want to clean this up and get rid of that other part, I'm just going to rinse off my brush. Scrub some of that out. So my brush was wet. And I'm just going to wipe it off with my paper towel after I irritated the paint. And that's good. And back into my yellows and my boop, 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 boop. Oh, we're gonna make some sounds as we go. Okay, so obviously shadows have some leaves on them and I'm kind of scrubbing in little yellow. A little yellow ochre, I think. Tapped into yellow ochre this time. Yellow ochre is a very muted yellow. It's a safe color to put around your shadows very earthy and some orange maybe some reds too here okay some orange in there 
doesn't want to be, you don't want a straight line necessarily for a shadow. And purple. Uh, purple makes a really nice shadow too. I'm just going to add a bit of purple in here. Very, very slight touch. Slight touches. This one has a bigger trunk, so I need it to be a bigger shadow. Okay, that's good. If you add purple somewhere, you need to put it in a few other spots. And for me, I'm just going to put it in a few spots. Well, this. So purple against yellow is a... Um, like I said, comp they're complementary colors, kind of like your oranges and your red, your reds and your greens. So if you uh, have any spots that you want to pop a bit more, throw in a dark. So I've done that, and I just take my finger and rub this in. Gotta have some darks up there, I felt like. Just got some light on my finger, titanium buff. If you went a little too dark, you wanna knock it back. This is what you would do. So put the white and titanium buff, a little bit of that, and went over some of that purple. Let's throw some purple in the leaves down here. And some green. So obviously this grass would have had some, would have had some greens down here too. This painting just will never end. It's tricky when you're painting because you don't know necessarily when to stop. Well, they say you know when to stop when you've done everything that you can think of that needs to be done. Hey, I just grabbed my angle brush because it's just slightly cleaner now. I'm gonna give this one final review. I'm gonna put some lights in here. This is some horizontal lines that I'm just throwing in, like it's like some kind of a path back there, but. Obviously, we're going to have some leaves on it, that path, so that like that. Scrub that around. And we're going to take a step back and see how this is. little bit of color over here where it was overly muted. Okay, I think because our time is up today, we're gonna call this one finished. I'm gonna sign off on it. And I will use a nice autumn -y red color with a little bit of purple. lovely scribbled signature and okay you have yourself an artful day <laughs>